There is no time where it's more important to hit on your waivers than early on in the season. I'm going to run you for a bunch of players who I like and who I'm looking to add this week. I'm going to tell you how often they're rostered in Yahoo leagues, and I'm going to tell you why you should be adding them right now. Keep watching right to the end because I've got some really low rostered players who you want to add. Braylon Allen, 10% rostered on Yahoo, rookie of the week. I mean, this is a guy who went out there at age 20 and scored a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown, the youngest skill position player ever to do that. His opportunity share jumped from 8% in week one to 32% in week two. And I think in positive game scripts where games are close or the Jets are leading, we're going to see even more of Braylon Allen at times. This was a prospect who a lot of people really liked coming into the NFL draft. And then, of course, the Jets grab him and he stuck behind Brees Hall. But it looks like he could have standalone value as well as contingent value. He averaged 1,160 rushing yards over his last three years in college 11.6 touchdowns 5.8 yards per attempt and when he was on the field there wasn't a noticeable drop off from Brees Hall particularly like Braylon Allen was averaging 4.7 yards per carry in his seven attempts compared to Brees Hall's 4.4 had four targets as well the running backs in Rodgers offenses they're always going to see a lot of targets between Brees and Braylon, they had 12 targets out of 29 possible. So I'd be willing to go somewhere in the region of 15 to 20% of my fab to try and get Braylon Allen. Don't go crazy because you are going to need a Brees Hall injury for it to really pay off. But I like Braylon Allen plenty. We we'll move on to the next player in just a second, but hit that subscribe button while you're here. We do Dynasty, we do Best Ball, we do Redraft, we do DFS. We try to get you covered for everything you need to win in 2024. Hit the subscribe button. Help me help you. Derek Carr rostered 19% on Yahoo leagues, and I think that's going to jump up sizably after back-to-back -to -back top six quarterback finishes as we head into Monday night football anyway. Finished 2023 really strong. He had a few little injuries and things that seemed to be impeding him last year, but now he's had 19 touchdowns going back over his last seven games. And this year in particular, the added motion in this Clint Kubiak offense, it seems to really be helping. It helps to be mitigating a bad offensive line. And we're seeing Derek Carr just go out there and ball out week after week. The offense, it's really clicking. And I think if you're somebody who's rostered one of these quarterbacks like Caleb Williams, who looks a bit shaky right now, then going out and getting Derek Carr, putting Caleb back on the bench for a little bit until he sorts himself out, that's no bad thing. Also, make sure that Rashid Shahid is rostered in your leagues. Some leagues out there, he's still not been taken off waivers, and I would guess that there's going to be some hefty bids for him this week. Quentin Johnston, 7% rostered, and this one's a bit of a surprise to me. This is a player that, you know, I drafted like 300 best ball teams and barely ever touched Quentin Johnston. But look, he went out there and he equaled his 2023 touchdown total of two within two games this year. He played 31% of his snaps from the slot this weekend. That's more than Lad McConkey, who everyone assumed would be the slot receiver. We know how valuable being a slot receiver with Justin Herbert can be. That's where Keenan Allen absolutely fed for years. So if Quentin Johnson is going to take a bit of a step forward, if the team trusts him, then it's worth an ad. It's worth putting on your bench and seeing whether this is a guy who can actually turn into a, a meaningful role. This was a first round talent a year ago. Yes, he might have been overdrafted slightly by Ivy NFL, but hey, look, let's give him a chance. I'm fine taking him as a bench stash and seeing what works out. He leads the Chargers in receiving yards at the minute with 89, and they have a big game against the Chiefs in week four where there could be a lot of passing volume. Before we get to the next player, make sure you're checking for guys we talked about last week. In last week's video, we talked about Rashid Shahid, Tank Bigsby, Wondale Rumson, Alex Pierce, and Alexander Madison. They all went out, apart from possibly Tank Bigsby, and had a good week again, really solidified their roles. So make sure that those guys are off waivers before you start bidding on these ones. Demarcus Robinson, somebody I wrote about extensively through the offseason because the Rams played so much free wide receiver sets. You go back to last year, and from week 12 onwards, he was wide receiver 23. He really clicked with Matthew Stafford down the stretch. Now you've got injuries to Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua. It could make him the de facto wide receiver one on this offense for the Rams. I would very much go and check for Jordan Whittington as well, who... Over the summer, the Athletics Jordan Rodrigue said would be the direct replacement to either Cooper Cup or Puka Nakua if they got hurt. Well, now both are, so don't be surprised if Sean McVay tries to scheme up some stuff with Jordan Whittington in mind. But Demarcus Robinson is probably the floor play here. 
played 92% of snaps in back-to-back weeks, just seems to have the trust of the team, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him have some reasonable value going forward. Geno Smith, 34% rostered. It is so good to see Geno Smith just balling out. Back-to-back top eight QB finishes, 73% completion rate versus 65% in 2023. It seems like Ryan Grubb's offense for he's brought from Washington, it seems to have really clicked for Gino yesterday against the Patriots. He was just dicing them up. He was really getting both DK Metcalf and Jackson Smith and Jigba involved early and throughout 249 passing yards per game. That's the eighth most among current NFL quarterbacks. This is an offense that I want peace of, and I'll be taking Gino on rosters where I've got those kind of shaky rookie quarterbacks like Caleb Williams, who we mentioned earlier. Six more players coming up, but come on hit subscribe. I know you're enjoying this content. We're going to keep it going. Antonio Gibson, yep, buying into the Patriots is less attractive than some of these other offenses, which are a lot more fun. But look, Gibson's had 19 touches combined over the opening two games. We see that New England, they just they want to be a run-heavy team right now. They gave the running backs 36 combined touches in week two. That's a huge amount. And Gibson, give him his credit, he went 11 for 96 on the ground in week two, averaging 8.7 yards per carry. They aren't targeting the wide receivers. This game for the Patriots, it's all about the running backs. It's all about the tight ends, and that's all it's going to be. So maybe things change when Drake May gets in there eventually. But for now, Antonio Gibson has huge contingent value if anything happens from Andre Stevenson. And there's going to be weeks during the bye weeks where you need a flex play consideration, and Gibson could be that. Samaje P. Ryan, 4% rostered on Yahoo Leagues. Also go and check for Carson Steele, who the team do seem to like, the rookie who they've designated as a fullback, but is definitely also a running back. P. Ryan, he had a really good year in his final year in Cincinnati, and then he left to go to Denver, and Denver just never really seemed to understand how to get the best out of him. The Chiefs, look, they're a better run team. They understand how to get the best out of players in a way that Sean Payton perhaps doesn't. So if I've got to put my chips on one of those coaches doing something right, it's Andy Reid every time. I think that you're going to see Samaje P. Ryan have standalone value, but if Isaiah Pacheco's ankle injury turns out to be worse than expected, then you could end up having huge contingent value on Samaje P. Ryan here. He's probably going to split work with the rookie Carson Steele, but P. Ryan is an experienced player. He's good in pass protection. He's good receiving the ball. He's reliable around the goal line. P. Ryan can absolutely have a path to a huge amount of high value touches. We are diving deep here. Jalen Tolbert, 2% rostered on Yahoo League. So if you're in a standard league where you're not starting too many wide receivers, it's probably one that you can leave alone. But if you're starting like four or five wide receivers, Jalen Tolbert's creeping into that conversation where we need to be taking notice of him. He went six for 82 in week two, wide receiver 23 before we get to Monday Night Football. He was the clear wide receiver three ahead of the likes of Jalen Brooks, Kevontae Turpin. And the crux of this play It's that the running back room looks awful for the Cowboys. You know, they had two games so far and none of their running backs have gone over 40 yards in either of them, despite them seeing plenty of volume. Brandon Cooks has been a little up and down to start the year. He had a good week one, then he had a very quiet week two. Jalen Tolbert seems to have gotten past his issues that he's had over the last few years. And if you're in deeper leagues... I'd grab him off waivers, but I wouldn't bid very much at all. Another New England Patriot, it is Hunter Henry, who had a massive... 50% team target share yesterday with 12 targets. There were only six games all of last year where a Titan saw more than that. Hunter Henry turned it in for eight receptions for 109 yards. The Patriots fit 24 passes yesterday. Only five went to wide receivers. The wide receivers, when they caught them, turned them into a massive 19 yards in total. So this It runs through the tight ends. It runs through the running backs. Hunter Henry was a priority for this new regime to sign when they got into the offseason. And I'm expecting Hunter Henry to probably be the most reliable pass catcher on the Patriots team for the entirety of the season. Jalen Naylor, 1% rostered in Yahoo leagues. I mean, the Vikings are having so little injury luck this year. You look at over the summer when J.J. McCarthy tore his meniscus, and then you've got Justin Jefferson getting banged up, and you've got Jordan Addison getting banged up. But Jalen Naylor, back-to-back weeks with touchdowns, he's not really seeing massive volume yet, but he led all Minnesota wide receivers in snaps yesterday with 92%. I think we can expect to see plenty of him next week, regardless of if Jordan Addison or Justin Jefferson are healthy, because they're just incredibly thin behind that. And if Jalen Naylor is earning Sam Donald's trust when it comes to red zone, end zone, 
then it's absolutely worth playing, particularly in deeper leagues. The injuries, they don't seem to be getting any easier for Vikings. And I think that Jalen Naylor, we're going to see plenty of them this year. Those are your week three waivers. Let me know in the comments which guys you're most excited to pick up. If you got any questions, start sits, trades, leave them all because we answer 100% of the questions on this channel. All we want to do is set you up to win big in 2024.